Hey, so I'm going to go ahead and give you guys an introduction to the anatomy section that we are moving into now that we are done with science fair. So this is the guide for week four. And as you can see, it says here in community that we are doing community presentations, which we have already had our science fair, so we're not actually presenting our projects anymore, but we are going to do a very brief group presentation in assembly tomorrow. And um, we're gonna talk about that first thing in the morning at 8.30. But anyway, what I wanna do in this video is introduce the biology, the anatomy. So it tells in here that in community, we're gonna begin the respiratory system. And when we turn the page and you look at what they're doing at home, preparing for week five. So here we are at home preparing for week five. It says, draw and label the respiratory system in your nature sketch journal, draw daily. Define your terms. And then on week six, they have to be paired to draw and label the respiratory system from memory. That's actually going to give them two weeks to practice drawing this system, and then they're gonna do it from memory. It will be a lot like what we do in cartography where we have to you know, draw Asia from memory or something like that. So basically, I the way I've done it in the past, and it works really well, um, it worked well for Nathan when I had a student at home doing it, and anyway, is I will have them have two books. Now, one is a sketchbook where they are gonna practice daily drawing their maps. You can see here are Nathan's daily practice. He drew, drew, drew every single day. So one of those is that, and it's, it's just drawings, okay? There's no research or anything going into that. And then what Nathan did was, this was his nature sketch journal. This is what he used at the beginning of the year for those um, presentations. You see igneous rocks and constellations or whatever. At, once we got done with that, when we were done, hold on, I'm sorry. When we were finished our presentations and we did science fair, and then, gosh, where's the last one? Here we go. He gave himself a little cover page here, research anatomy. Then he, what he did was, um, well, I guess the bare minimum is that they're supposed to research these terms. So there is a list of terms in your guide, I'll show you in just a minute, and they have to find a definition out there somewhere. So I've gone back and forth on whether or not we should just have a group list of terms, uh, definitions that everybody has the same thing, but it kind of, in my opinion, defeats the purpose of the strand, which is to research. So I would prefer them go research and find their own definitions based on where they looked. So what Nathan did was he wrote his definitions here and then he found one to him, an interesting fact that he wanted to share with the class and he wrote it in the book. And then he drew his best drawing for the week over here so that we would have this, you know, finished product type thing. You can see there's the next one, which is the digestive system. And then there's the heart. As we move through week by week, he's got kind of this two page spread, final product looking thing. And then he also had this book where he did his practice, practice, practice. So anyway, that's what that looks like. Now, some of you might have students that would prefer to do it a little bit more involved. If you don't wanna use this nature sketch journal and you would prefer to use just a composition notebook, this is what I have been doing um, so that I'm prepared to talk about it. Uh, this is kind of a above and beyond, so depending on your student, how you want them to do it. They definitely need to be finding the definition. It would be really fantastic if they understand the function because that will help them to better understand the definition. And then a connection point, how do all these terms work together? So I created a little, um, these are in the back of the guide. I'll show you where those are. Like just, I don't want to call it a lap book, but just a, uh, just a journal. Here's all the terms, and then I just one page per term, nasal passage, I had my definition, I had my function, and I wrote up a connection. This was me just writing up notes on what I found interesting about the nasal passage. 
and the nose. And then the farther I got into it, I was like, oh, here's some great scriptures on the mouth and using, using your mouth. Um, there's the pharynx. These are all parts of the respiratory system. And then it occurred to me that I could cut out some of my sketches that I had been working on in my sketchbook and paste them in here or find pictures on the internet. So there's an epiglottis right there. Um, one interesting thing here is, you know, me and my color coding here, whenever I found something that had to do with disease or how things could go wrong with the system, I used orange. But epiglottitis, itis has, is some kind of Latin thing for inflammation. So epiglottitis is when um, the epiglottis becomes inflamed. Anyway, so just interesting facts. Um, again, a drawing of just the larynx. These are my drawings versus what I print off of the internet. Here's another laryngitis. I was drawing a connection between what I had learned about itis. Anyway, and so this is me, an adult, okay? So your 12-year-old boy is probably not going to want to do all of this, and that's totally okay. Um, this is me trying to make a really cool book that helps me to remember the information that I learned about the respiratory system. So anyway... And I just did a different page for each term and just wrote up a bunch of stuff. So, you know, there's your healthy lung and your smoker's lung. And it just, anyway, so I, I know that's a lot. I don't know that that is what your 12 year old, 13 year old's gonna wanna do. So again, what Nathan did is fine. He just defined the terms. He, pre he was prepared for conversation by having an interesting or fascinating fact, and he had his best drawing over there, and, and that's sufficient. So you guys decide what you want to do. You definitely need a sketchbook, a sketchbook for daily drawing, and then you need some type of journal, whether you use this or you use a composition notebook, and then just they're going to do the process to whatever whatever expectation that you set. So Joel decided he wanted to use his nature sketch journal. So he's gonna do the same thing that Nathan did and he's going to just go to the end of where his fall presentations were and just start from there. Now, where are you gonna go get your information? Okay, a couple things. One, in the back at the beginning of the research appendix and the student guide is this page right here with the schedule. I do have on here that week four we were gonna do a dissection, but that is not gonna happen. But we are gonna introduce respiratory system. And then next week we're gonna discuss the respiratory system and introduce the digestive, All right? And then they will get two weeks of practice drawing the respiratory system. And then on week six, they will quiz the respiratory system, we'll discuss digestive and we'll introduce heart. So there's kind of a lot going on, but this is your page. If you're lost and you don't know what day is what and when we're quizzing what, it's all right here. And so this is at um, the very first page of the research appendix in the student guide. Then back here is the list of terms that they have to. This is page 134 and 135 in the guide. And these are all of the terms that they need to research for the respiratory system. Um, and then these, this is the order in which the systems go. We'll do respiratory, then digestive, then heart, then skin, and so on. There's another page over there as well. Then the students also have these drawings right here that they could just sketch from this, okay? Um, in the student guide that I originally gave you, the one that's not spiral bound, there is this page plus an answer key. So I did not provide the answer key in the copy that I gave the students. But if you look at the original one that I gave to you, you will find a page just like this with the answers written on which term goes where in the diagram. But you will find all the diagrams in here. They can copy from these, okay, where they're drawing. Or um, because they need to be researching, you will need to have some anatomy books on hand. Now, whether you own anatomy books or you just go to the library, it's up to you. So um, over the years, I've just managed to collect a few of these. So some of the core books I'll probably have him using to research would be some of these. I really like this Apologia, Exploring Creation with Human Anatomy and Physiology. It'll give a good, you know, I might just have him read the chapter 
just to have an understanding of the system and how it all works. And then um, in here, like if you see, I think I have the pages tabbed here. Here's the research. So if he's looking for, um, say, the trachea, then he's going to have to learn to dig around and find where do they talk about the trachea? Do they give a definition of the epiglottis? So they mention the epiglottis here, but is there a definition? So between a book like this that might have a definition, all right, and it talks about it, and they can kind of dig around and find what they can find. Um, I have this book as well. Now, this is intended for an older person. So for these guys to just sit and read this, they, it's probably going to be kind of tricky, but they can find definitions. Like trachea, it divides into the two bronchi. All right, that looks like that might work for a definition. Anyway, um, there it is. Trachea, passage that takes air to the lungs, divides into the two primary, primary bronchi. So they're going to find their definitions like that. Now, I would suggest also, whether it be the library or if you own any books, these books are below their reading level, but... Having a quick read like this might give them a great overview on how to understand that particular system. So I really like these, the true books, and then of course Seymour Simon. His books are always fantastic. So this is the Seymour Simon book, um, Lungs. And then I think there's a book by him for kind of all the systems. They do. I know they have them in the library, multiple copies. But anyway, these are beautiful books. It's an easy read. Um, so I might have him read there as well. One thing that I think the kids need to understand is that research can be tricky. It's not just, oh, I found one book that's going to give me all the definitions I need, and then I'm done. So, um, oh, shoot, the other book that I always have out, let me think if I have it handy. I don't have it handy, but it's that science dictionary. So, um you know, you, we can find a lot of the terms in that science dictionary, and it's geared for middle school students, so the definitions are written in a way that is easier for them to understand than perhaps a book like this. But um, all of the definitions that they come to class with won't be identical, and that's okay. Um, they should mean the same basic thing, because we are talking about the same body parts. But um, research is not um, what I was saying earlier is they might have to use multiple resources. So don't think that there's one perfect resource out there that's going to have everything in it. Um, it's going to involve hunting. Um, I would prefer him not to use the internet because Googling body parts can get really tricky. And, um, oh, that's one other thing that you want to note, especially if you have one of these books attended for older people, that you just be prepared. For, I mean, like, you know, you know, like there's stuff in here. I just happen to turn to that page. And so depending on what you are, what your student already knows about these kinds of things, you know, anyway, just pay attention and do what best suits you on that. Anyway, hopefully this is helpful. I know it's a long video, um, but we can, I wanted you guys to be prepared for Wednesday. I would like them to come this Wednesday with their two books, whether it be with the sketchbook and a journal of some sort, whether it be a composition notebook or the nature sketch journal, I don't, I don't care, but they need, they need two, a sketchbook and a journal. One is for daily practice and one is for research. So anyway, we can um, touch base on this on Friday night when we have our mom meeting, but I wanna make sure everybody had an understanding going into tomorrow of what we do with anatomy. All right, let me know if you have any questions.